Good morning, friends. When I was a medical student, I used to read coagulation disorders with all the concentration that I I can muster. But within few weeks, it used to just go poof, and everything used to vaporize. And I used to wonder whether I have ever read this coagulation thing. In this podcast, I, Dr. Sachin Kali, is trying to revise prothrombin time again with all of you. Prothrombin time, the part of the coagulation testing that evaluates the extrinsic pathway. So let's start with the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, or rather, let's call it, call it the PTT pathway and PT pathway, because intrinsic pathway is evaluated by the activated partial thromboplastin time that is PTT and extrinsic pathway is evaluated by prothrombin time that is PT and both the pathways converge in a common pathway which is starting with factor X X is the spot X is the letter that we use to mark a spot and that's how we can remember that both the pathways converge at X and V fits in the top of X so that is a cofactor for X. That's how we can remember. Then activated factor 10 converts factor 2 that is prothrombin to thrombin. And thrombin is one of the most important uh, factors which converts fibrinogen into fibrin. So soluble molecule of fibrinogen is converted into solid fibrin clot. That's the coagulation cascade. Now in this brief podcast let us see some of the intricacies of prothrombin time. Basically, what we do in prothrombin time is take patient's blood in 3.2% citrate in the ratio of 9 is to 1, that is 9 part of blood and 1 part of anticoagulant. Then, laboratory centrifuges this blood to prepare platelet poor plasma. And this is added, 100 microliter of this is added into the prothrombin time reagent, which is nothing but tissue thromboplastin or phospholipid source of which uh, can be a tissue factor from rabbit brain and calcium then a stopwatch is started either manually or by the machines that do the uh, this coagulation testing and time for clot detection in seconds is nothing but the prothrombin time so that's the way prothrombin time test is done now it is sensitive this test is sensitive to factor 7 We know that extrinsic pathway starts with factor 7. So it is sensitive to deficiency of factor 7, but also to factor 5 and 10, which are part of the common pathway. Normal value varies from lab to lab, but usually not more than 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, sometimes up to 12 or 13 seconds, depending on the reagent that is used by the lab. Then there is something called INR. All of us are familiar with INR it is international normalized ratio and how it is calculated the PT ratio of a test sample is compared to a normal PT corrected for the sensitivity of the thromboplastin that is the prothrombin time reagent used in the test complicated it's nothing just simple means lab establishes the mean plasma prothrombin time for its reagent and This works as a denominator for the prothrombin ratio that is patient's prothrombin time divided by the normal prothrombin time and this is raised to ISI that is International Sensitivity Index. What is this ISI? We are going to see in the next slide. So ISI is basically International Sensitivity Index and the concept came like this. The PT or the prothrombin time in an individual with one or more deficiencies of clotting factor will vary with the type of thromboplastin. For example, whether the thromboplastin is rabbit, human, bovine or whatever used in the assay. This difference in sensitivities is known as the sensitivity index. And individual thromboplastins, that is the prothrombin reagent can be calibrated and should be calibrated by the manufacturers against the international WHO reference thromboplastin also called international reference preparation or IRP 
to assign them an international sensitivity index or ISI. Okay, so the first WHO thromboplastin was assigned an ISI of one, and against this, the subsequent reference preparations that all other thromboplastins are calibrated. Okay, so this ISI is determined by the prothrombin time reagent manufacturer, and labs have to note this ISI and use that ISI in calculation of INR. Otherwise, the INR can be misleading because same prothrombin time with different ISI will yield different INR. Suppose one ISI, one reagent's ISI is one. the other reagents isi is 2 and the patient's prothrombin time is 24 seconds by both the reagents and normal is 12 seconds for both the reagents so prothrombin time ratio is patient's prothrombin time divided by the normal prothrombin time that is 24 by 12 that is 2 but first time uh, in the first reagent the isi is 1 So two raised to one is two, but the second ISI is two. So two raised to two is four. So in the first case, the INR will be two, but in the second case, the INR will be four. So that much difference can be there if ISI is not correct, uh, correctly identified and used for calculation of INR. So that is the importance of INR and ISI. So INR is recommended to be used. only in case of patients on oral anticoagulants the targets are decided for that only for other purposes like monitoring whether the liver is recovering from uh, liver diseases only prothrombin time is supposed to be sufficient now coming to the various targets of inr in various diseases so inr should be maintained between 2 to 3 in case of deep vein thrombosis pulmonary embolism atrial fibrillation and myocardial infarction but in case of mechanical heart valves it can be between 2.5 to 3.5 now coming to causes of abnormal prothrombin time first of course is the factor deficiency that is factor 7 because extrinsic pathway starts with factor 7 and common pathway that is 2 5 and 10 but in this case apttt is also expected to be prolonged and of course comadins and warfarin ingestion liver dysfunction and vitamin k deficiency now we have to remember some of the factors that can cause spurious results in prothrombin time this is something all of us dread a misleading prothrombin time leading to alteration of warfarin leading to problems for the patients and for us so first thing is which type of anticoagulant the labs are using 3.2% is the recommended and most of the citrate tubes are now coming with 3.2% so that is not an issue but second is the important issue that is underfilling or overfilling of the tube we know that whole blood to anticoagulant ratio is to be maintained in 9 is to 1 proportion that can be altered if the tube is underfilled leading to more anticoagulant compared to blood or overfill in that case more blood compared to anticoagulant second important factor which is not in our hand is the patient's hematocrit patient's hematocrit can also enter, uh, alter the anticoagulant ratio so low hematocrit will lead to too little anticoagulant because we will have more plasma and compared to that anticoagulant quantity will fall short but if the hematocrit is high there will be less of a plasma so it will be more of a anticoagulant for that little plasma so that for that we have to have a correction for high hematocrits the formula is coming in one of the next slides how we can correct for this high hematocrit we have to alter the anticoagulant volume in such cases now coming to order of fill what does it mean means labs have to collect edt a tube after the coagulation tube is drawn otherwise the edta can enter the coagulation tube which can cause overwinding of calcium and uh, spurious alteration of all coagulation tests then 
transport transport is also important because pfo releases over time and neutralizes heparin labile factors decrease over time at room temperature so it has to be transported early ideally all the things should be complete within 2 to 4 hours and uh, done with and phlebotomy coming to phlebotomy when waste tube should be drawn to drawing coagulation study prior to drawing coagulation studies because sometimes uh, some uh, infusion that is going on that can interfere with uh, the coagulation testing so one two three ml blood should be drawn and discarded and that should lead to less of a problem in analytical phase now coming to clot clot can cause effect in two ways clot can lead to loss of factors to form the clot that is lengthen the time clot can also interfere with clot detection that is shorter time so if uh, there is loss of factors to form the clot it will lead to lengthening of the time and small clot can interfere with clot detection of the machines leading to shorter shorter time so that's how it can interfere now coming to how to correct the anticoagulant volume for high hematocrit so formula is that suppose whatever volume of specimen you have decided to take suppose you have decided to take uh, 2 ml of volume so mention 2 here and for patient hematocrit is 60 then uh, mention 60 in the hematocrit so 100 minus hematocrit divided by 595 minus hematocrit and whole thing multiplied by the volume of the specimen you are going to collect that much anticoagulant volume should be there in the tube that is the formula for correction of hematocrit now coming to last slide that is how to evaluate an elevated prothrombin time what is the flow chart so first thing to think when we have elevated prothrombin time is to check whether patient is on oral anticoagulants if yes our search for the elevated prothrombin time is over if that is not the case we go to next cause that is vitamin k deficiency and we try to look for that if that is the cause our search is over if that is also not the cause then third cause that remains is the liver diseases if liver disease is the cause our search is over but even that is also not there then we have to ask laboratories and laboratories should also do on their own the mixing studies that is mix patient's plasma with normal plasma and see whether the prothrombin time corrects or not in case of factor deficiency this prothrombin time elevated prothrombin time will go back to normal because the normal plasma will replenish the deficient coagulation factors but in case of inhibitors like lupus anticoagulant or other specific inhibitors mixing studies won't correct the prothrombin time so this is how we evaluate elevated prothrombin time so in this podcast we saw what is inr international normalized ratio we saw how isi that is international sensitivity index of the prothrombin reagent affects the inr and we also saw how inr should be used only in case of oral anticoagulants so hope this podcast was useful to you this is sachin kale signing off this podcast this weekly podcast your comments and suggestions are most welcome thank you so much and see you again